push, 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 push. You, push, you, push, you, push. fuck off, Adam. <laughs> And real quick, I'm just going to go over the bass that I did for the uh, Hamdi and Skrillex push remix that I put out yesterday. So this is the patch for the bass. Triangle wave is the main oscillator, and it's FM'd by the square wave. And the FM amount is quite high. You can mess with that and get different tones, but I kind of wanted the gritty noisiness of a higher amount. So there we go. And then I have the low pass filter that's on it acting as more of a dipping high shelf as opposed to an actual low pass and I did that with the mix knob because I didn't want to use my EQ uh, effect for two things as you'll see in a second. The other thing that's going on is there's some noise happening. Uh, just brought up the release and the attack a little bit. This LFO3 is controlling the overall shape and you bring in the sub oscillator and that's controlling the shape of that too. So now you have a full bass. Uh, and then the other thing is I have LFO2 on a quarter note, and it's bringing up, if you look in the matrix, the pitch of the, there it is, right here, the master tune of the entire synth. Because in the original track, you hear it kind of like scoop up toward the end of like the notes, and most of these are like around a quarter note, so I kind of, you know, guesstimated it with that. Effects wise, uh, some of these are not on, so don't even worry about those. But I had the dimension expander over here, just widening it up a little bit which I do more in the actual post-processing. And then this EQ, which I'm just cutting out the lows because uh, the sub is going direct out and I wanted it to be a very stable bottom end. So that's it coming right out of the synth. It's nothing too crazy, but it's fun. And then over here, we have a little pro R doing a room verb right in the mids and I boosted that quite a bit, but it's only at around like 9% or so. The point of this was just to kind of add on to what the Dimension Expander was doing and just give it more space to exist in. And then I had this Acon Digital Multiply, which I don't see a lot of people talking about this effect very much anymore, but more or less it's kind of a chorus with some stereo widening. It's weird, but if you hear what it's doing, it's kind of on the sides putting a little bit of like some weird chorus-y uh, stuff. And I, the internal EQ for it is for the wet signal, so I'm just having it only do it above 200 hertz. So that's fun. And then a Soothe, which I know has gotten hate recently on Twitter, so y'all can chill at that. I like this plugin. Wow, would you look at that? The depth is doing absolutely nothing. That's really insane. I thought that was doing something, but I'm wrong. Uh, then this EQ, which looks counterintuitive because everything on it is boosted, but... Yeah, when you're in the middle of trying to write something really fast, you can make some silly little shapes like this, but... Yeah. Made it louder, for sure, and just kind of changed the overall balance. Uh, trying to get these characteristic mids out, some of the sub area getting pushed, and then the top end, so you have, like, spice on it. And then... Actually, that's pretty much it. So. Uh, I did have this tape stop on for different sections where I was doing transition thing. And then I was messing around with the minimal audio rift feedback, which is super fun. I was going to automate this on at some point in the tune, and then I ended up not. Let's get it! The other thing that's happening is just this channel EQ that also looks insane, and it's really boosting the, uh, below 90 hertz region, and then, of course, the top end. Um, yeah, other than that, it goes over to the sidechain bus, and I have a fruity balance doing, uh, gain sidechain, so it's, like, actually taking the volume down, and then I also have this parametric EQ2 with band 1, uh, that is, when this, uh, clip is activated, if you look at the routing for this automation, it's going both to the balance and band 1 of that EQ, so it's doing, like, specific low-end sidechain. So if I just detach this real quick and play this. So yeah, when you put everything else in. Heck yeah. And then this. This 
is, I believe, actually the same patch. Um, but... Ah, I figured it out. The only difference between the B section bass and the first bass is, so if you listen here, and then here, the only difference between these two patches, same processing, same post, oh, slamming my mic, uh, same processing, same post, all that stuff, the FM amount is different. So when you're messing with these two specific wavetables, the different FM amount can change uh, the overall harmonic structure and make it sound like different notes are more prominent than others. Um, so the harmony in this feels different than the first bass, so that's why it feels higher. But yeah, other than that, that is pretty much all that is different. So I think I also added some extra resonance to the filter, but overall it's the same thing. Yeah, so with all that, hope you enjoyed this. I have a lot more of this kind of content that's going to be on my Patreon shortly. I don't have an exact release date yet, but it's not too far off in the future. So if you're interested in seeing me explain some things about my upcoming project, seven tracks of good juiciness, uh, please keep an eye out for that and let me know what's good. Have a good one, folks. Folks.